This all, it's funny because my story kind of started with a hat also. Yo-sha! What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and today I got a pretty different kind of shrimp for you. Did you see that? I breathed. Normally in every one of my videos, I cut out all my breaths because I don't want to waste your guys' time. But today, I'm going to tell you guys a story during my shrimp. And if you want to, you don't have to subscribe. If you're subscribed, great. Thanks. If you don't want to, you don't have to. It's totally fine. I'm going to open this booster box of uh, Romance Dawn so you can see me shrimp this booster box. But this is going to be no cuts. This is a raw, this is a raw video for my life story to you guys so you can learn a little bit about me and join the holy hexagon and have some fun all right so i'm just going to be shrimping while i do this so i'm going to have this box here and i'm going to tell you guys this story so this all it's funny because my story kind of started with a hat also or you know hats i uh i started um crocheting hats when i was 12 years old and um one of my friends wanted to buy one of my hats uh bless him and I asked him, you know, how much do you want to buy this hat for? And he told me that he would, um, he'd give me 20 bucks for the hat. Um, and it took me about uh, nine hours to make the hat. And I spent $16 on the yarn. So I did the calculation and that meant I could make $4 a day, which at the time, $4 was enough to buy a full size hoagie at the hoagie shop in town, Kinemon. So I was thinking to myself, all right, cool. Like I could, uh, I could make enough money every day to buy a hoagie because the hoagies were massive. A hoagie, for those of you who don't know, is like a submarine sandwich. And I really liked them when I was in fifth grade. And I was thinking I could just get one hoagie a day. I could eat half for lunch and half for dinner. Wow, is this two SRs in a row? That's crazy. Um, but how was I going to feed my family? And then I thought to myself, you know, I should do what my mom does because my mom's a dentist and she's the one that bought me the yarn. And one day I'll buy my kid yarn, Kaido. And they'll have the real same realization that they should be a dentist also. And there would be this never ending line of dentists. So it's kind of funny, actually, since I was 12 years old is when I decided I wanted to be a dentist. And I spent my whole life kind of telling people, you know, I'd meet them and say, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a dentist when I grow up, which is funny because after going back and watching One Piece and watching Luffy tell everybody he's going to be the king of the pirates, you know, different, different. And whoa, Mihawk right out of there. That is kind of wild. Well, there's the alt art. So you saw the alt art now. If you don't want to stay and listen to the rest of the story, you don't have to. But I'm going to keep shrimping. I'm already already two SRs into this box. That's kind of wild. Two SRs and an altar. Have I pulled any packs that weren't just straight heat? What the heck? Yeah, there's three Dawn and it was three SRs. That's wild. Anyway, so um, so yeah, I kind of just spent my whole life telling people I was going to be a dentist while people like laughed at me about what I was saying. But that was my dream, right? It's what I wanted to do. And I, you know, I dedicated my life path to it. But I also didn't really get distracted from having fun. Uh, that's a kind of weird thing to say. But I made sure that I had a lot of fun the whole time. Um, even, you know, when I got to, uh, when I got to, uh, undergraduate, I went to go talk to the pre-health advisor to ask, you know, what classes do I need to take in order to, uh, get into dental school. And the pre-health advisor actually just laughed at me and she was like, don't worry, you're not going to get into dental school. Um, and it wasn't actually until I got into dental school, I was talking about that with my dad and he gave me the really good idea to write her a thank you letter. So I did actually write her a thank you letter for helping motivate me to get into dental school. So that was, that was pretty fun. But, um, but yeah, you know, I spent my whole life telling people I was going to be a dentist and it was kind of my dream. And, um, I really made sure that I enjoyed the adventure of getting there because I always thought, you know, if it doesn't work out and I don't end up becoming a dentist, it's fine. Uh, you know, there's plenty of things that I like doing that I have fun with that I'm interested in. So it's not like I'm going to be missing out on some other aspect of my life. So I always put energy into um, figuring out how to have a good time with whatever I was doing. And um, I actually decided to become an art major during my undergrad. At uh, I went to Pitzer College in Southern California. And the reason why I decided to become an undergrad is because I went and talked to that pre-health advisor. Um, she told me a website to go to after I told her, you know, I I'm definitely want to be a dentist. So I really appreciate if you could tell me what classes to take. And I was looking at the classes to take and it was like all science classes, which sciences are extremely important if you want to be a dentist or any kind of doctor because you have somebody's life in your hands. So it's very important to understand the risks that you're putting them under or, you know, all the different things that are involved in everything that you're doing. 
So science is abs oh Luffy Dawn. I didn't even see that. Science is absolutely extremely important. Um, but um, yeah, I I decided to be an art major because I figured um, I would actually benefit more from learning how to use my hands rather than uh, learn how to stare at beakers for a couple of years. So I did that. I did I did a, a studio art major, and I did all my. Uh, background or art history in Japanese art history, which is why I'm so interested in Japanese art history. I'm actually working on an article right now about this game and about uh, how it fits into Japanese art history and what it all means. Wait, is this the other SR? Okay, wait, so if we just got four SRs, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna crack another box. I'm just getting into another box. There's nothing, nothing else special in here. Look at that, four SRs and we got the alt art. So no alt art leader, but that's fine. Luffy Dawn hit everything hot in this box. So that's pretty good. Let's see what the box hopper was. My man's Neko Mamushi. Is he in here? Cat Viper for the win? No, who's who? Anyway, so to get back to my life story. So it was with this hat, right? I was making hats and the hat is kind of what got me to decide I wanted to be a dentist, weirdly enough. And then, you know, when I was in, I, w I was growing up, I grew up on the, um, let's get something hot out of this box. I grew up, uh, going down to the beach. I spent a lot of time on an island, Long Beach Island off the coast of New Jersey. And, you know, spent a lot of time on boats, spent a lot of time on beaches, spent a lot of time drinking rum, having fun, partying, doing a thing, living the grog life. And uh, yeah, I, um, you know, I always identified as a pirate and I really liked the Pirates of the Caribbean movies like growing up, but um, it wasn't really until high school that I heard about One Piece. One of my friends, uh, told me he was like dude you got to check out this story he's like you like pirates like you got to check out this story it's all about pirates and at the time you know I was really into Dragon Ball growing up and I really liked Dragon Ball um, in high school still and I was thinking to myself man like there's no way that I could like Dragon Ball and One Piece and still have friends that's just not gonna happen this is crazy this is like all the SRs are just right at the top of these boxes this is like kind of wild um, so I was like, okay, I don't think I have space in my life to like Dragon Ball and One Piece. So I didn't get into it. So shout out to Mike Christensen, Mike Christensen, if you're watching this video, thanks for, you know, putting, be, putting One Piece in my brain before anybody else. That's three SRs in a row. I don't know what's going on with this box. Are all the SRs just right on top? Are we going to pull an alt art out of this pack? It looks, <laughs> that's a Shanks. That's a Shanks alt art right there. That's crazy. Wild. Anyway, so yeah, I, um, where was I in my story? Oh yeah, I was real. I, I wasn't that into One Piece. And then, you know, I, I went to uh, my undergrad. I had a blast in undergrad. There he is. Look at that dude. Just coming right out. That was, that was just four packs in a row of just straight heat. I, I feel like we're going to about to pull an alt art leader in the next pack. If we do, that's just, that's just too crazy. There's going to need to be, that's too wild. But yeah, so um, my friend told me about One Piece in high school. I, I ended up uh, applying to dental schools. You know, during my dental school interview, the um, the teacher, uh, the, the guy that was interviewing me asked me, he was like, why do you want to be a dentist? He was like, you know, I did a little Google search on you and I saw you got a couple of other things going on. I, I had a clothing company at the time. I was making a lot of clothes and having a lot of fun and putting a lot of that fun on the internet. And um, he was like, I see you have some other things going on. Why do you want to be a dentist? And I was like, well, you know, I've, uh, I've worked in my mom's office for a long time. My mom's a dentist. And I've seen a lot of people that are so unhappy with their smile that they won't even laugh at a joke. And I feel like giving somebody the power to laugh at a joke is like the key to the ultimate joke. And it seems like a pretty cool job to me. And he was like, whoa, okay, you're in. So that that's actually just like how I got it. I got into dental school with a joke about jokes that was actually very true about life. And I do think, you know, that's my favorite part of my job is when I get to restore somebody's smile. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. Anyway, um, yeah, so it was when I was in dental school that I actually started playing a Dragon Ball Super card game. And as I started playing a Dragon Ball Super card game, um, I was hanging out with guys at Locals and some of them were One Piece fans. I didn't know anything about One Piece. And one of the guys I was playing with was like, yo, if there was a One Piece card game, I would drop Dragon Ball and just play that. And I was like, dude, how could you say that? Dragon Ball's the best game I've ever played in my life. And he was like, well, One Piece is just a better story. And I was like, okay, I'll be the judge of that. So it wasn't actually until I graduated dental school that I read the One Piece story. There's a Luffy Dawn. And after reading the One Piece story, I realized that One Piece is actually a way better story. 
<laughs> really, really good story. And I started seeing all these things in the story that were kind of like lined up with my life, like, you know, people's dreams, how dreams have no end. Luffy's going around telling everybody he's going to be the king of the pirates. I was running around telling people I was going to be a dentist growing up. There it is. Another one. All right. Should we just bust into another? Because I'm not done with the story. I got to finish the story. So maybe it's another, uh, <laughs> another shrip them while we're at it. Because we got all the hits out of that. So, um, so yeah, I was, uh, here yeah so when i graduated dental school this hat actually i had this my mom got this for me for my birthday and i have this rainbow moonstone this is actually a labradorite skull that i got when i was living in hawaii and this is a pine cone that i sent the skull to my friend and had him uh, put it on this pine cone and my mom got me this uh, six pointed rainbow moonstone gem that i have on my hat and these actually had been sitting on my bedroom counter for uh, six years. They were just sitting on my dresser. And um, after I moved back, I, I read the One Piece story and I went to Comic-Con with my mom and my mom was like, yo, you gotta meet this lady. She makes these super cool hats. Okay, this is weird. All the SRs, I'm getting SRs out of the first pack of every box. If this, if this is three more SRs than an alt art. <sighs> All right. so. She was like, you got to make this lady. She makes these really cool hats and stuff. So I went over at Comic-Con. I met her and uh, I started looking at some of the hats. And I was like, wow, these are really cool. Um, do you have any of these in my size? And she was like, um, I don't, but I could always make one custom. And I was like, can you take parts of different hats and put them together into one custom hat? She was like, well, it depends on the parts. And I was like, can you take different parts of different hats in different colors and put them together in one hat? She was like, now we're talking. And I was, whipped out my sketchbook. I drew up this hat and I was like, this is what I want. I want this piece is this. I want to look like this. I want this kind of brim, blah, blah, blah. I want these holes for ropes and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, sure enough, she made me this hat and I was trying to figure out how to decorate it. And I realized that I had this treasure that had been sitting on my desk or my dresser for six years. And I figured the treasure was the perfect thing to put on this hat. So I took the treasure from my uh, from my dresser and I put it on this hat and I call this hat my treasure. And I got, uh, insp oh, Zoro Judo. That's a great SR to pull. I will never be mad about pulling a Zoro SR. It's such a sick looking card. Um, yeah, so I, um, I realized that this was my treasure and you know i realized it was about time for me to get a jolly roger and i took inspiration from luffy's jolly roger and i made uh i made my jolly roger with my hat and that's the story of my hat and my dream and all that stuff so um that's a little insight to me now let's get this alt art because i told you guys basically my life story now but yeah basically you know i think the thing that's really important is no matter what age you are no matter what part of life you're in it's important to to have dreams yeah i wanted to be a dentist um i am a dentist but that doesn't mean i still don't want to be other stuff it's good to keep evolving it's good to keep believing in yourself believe that you could be whatever it is that you want to be right what is it people's dreams have no end it's important it's important to not let your dream end because it's the fun part about being alive is having this dream and turning it into what you want it to be in your life so I think it's worth uh, investing your time and your mind into figuring out how you're going to make that happen. You know, what is your dream? Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? What's the most fun for you? What what feels gratifying in life? What feels rewarding? How do you enjoy your time? What's good time spent? Do you feel good when you make some art, when you make something and you can look back and say, hey, cool, I invested my time in this thing or maybe writing an article or, or doing some investigation about something or you know, forming a community, supporting people and something that makes you feel good about supporting them. And, you know, there's tons of stuff to do with your time. And it's good to have a dream because if you have a dream, then you get to work towards something. And it doesn't really matter if you get to that dream or not. As long as you enjoy the ride while you're on your way, then you'll live a life of peace. And if you live a life of peace and find peace in the things that you do, that's the most effective way to get the one piece. That's how you win peace. I think Let's have a dream, you know, work your way to it. Take your time, have fun. And remember when you play for fun, you already won. 
Now on another note about, oh, Luffy Dawn, I just skipped right past it. On another note about this community, you know, it's really cool to be in on the ground level of a gaming community. I've never done that before. And I think the thing that I wanna, you know, put some energy into projecting is, uh, I think it's really important for people to be supportive of each other's ideas. Um, it's definitely good to be critical. It's important to criticize things in a constructive way, but I think one of the important things in life that helps you continue to learn is to recognize that you really don't know everything about anything. Cause as soon as you think you know everything about anything, you can't learn about that thing anymore. So, you know, saying if you're doing, if you notice when I do a deck profile, you know, sometimes I'll say stuff is like mandatory or you got to have this, but in reality, I don't know the ratios. I don't know how absolutely amazing a card is. I have experience to inform my perspective and that's fine, but I don't know the absolute answer to anything and nobody really does. And it's really lame when you take that approach, especially with new players. So I think, you know, something I want to put energy into projecting on my channel for everybody that's listening and that I hope everybody can do with people in the community is learn how to be supportive of each other and your ideas and, you know, say, help people grow. You know, when people have questions, a lot of times in a game, a question may become this really simple thing to you because you've answered it so many times. But you have to remember for people that are starting games, these are extremely arbitrary concepts, right? Dawn and Dawn X, Dawn minus, all this stuff. Like this is all arbitrary stuff being represented with little rectangular pieces of paper. And uh, it's important to help people get to a place where they can understand how this stuff functions, be supportive of their questions, um, help them when they're in need, answer questions in a way that isn't uh, demeaning or talking down. And that's really what I think can be a really solid foundation for a strong gaming community because we're all here at the beginning. So that means that we all get to put our energy into forming this into the community that we want it to be. And I really want it to be one where people are supportive of each other. I think it's really good to get competitive. I think it's great to learn new stuff and put your energy into, you know, inventing new deck lists and thinking about, you know, different styles of play and different uh, concepts. There's, it's only the first set of this game and there's already so much diversity that can be created within the game and so many different styles of decks that can be played and play styles that can be exhibited within those. So I think that there's kind of like going to be limitless deck building potential in this game as there is in Dragon Ball. And I'm really excited to see where people's ideas go in these games. And I think in that pursuit, it's really important to support uh, Yamato. This is definitely Yamato. That looks like Yamato. Am I right about it? Yamato go dong bong. That is Yamato. Yeah, very nice. Very, very nice. But yeah, being supportive of each other's ideas and helping each other grow into new heights and doing all that I think is a really great way to build a community so that's my story thanks for sticking around to listen to it um I uh am not cutting any of my breaths this time I'm just slapping this video together and posting it so it's going to be really long if you made it here I'm glad you watched all the way in the end thank you so much I am a dentist I can't end without doing a dental tooth tip so my dental tooth tip to you would be it's good to brush your teeth in the morning you also should brush your teeth at night, but it's important. Sometimes I burp and I cut those out, but I'm not going to cut that one out because this is raw. It's important to remember to brush your teeth in the morning. I'm the kind of guy that I won't brush my teeth if I forget to do it before breakfast. If I'm gonna, if I tell myself oh, I'm going to brush my teeth after breakfast, I just won't do it. And I know that about myself, so I always brush my teeth before breakfast. It doesn't matter that much if you do it before or after. There are arguments on both sides that validate each of those perspectives. Personally, I just say brush your teeth when you remember to do it. If you're going to forget at one of those times, just do it at the time that you won't forget. So try that out. Thank you so much. And thanks for listening to my story.